So one of the features that is sorely missed in Final Cut Pro, of course, is motion tracking. The ability to take an object and track it to something in your film. Now, there are third-party solutions to this. You can go buy plugins from things like Motion VFX or Pixel Film Studios. I don't actually recommend that. I recommend that you get Motion 5. It is part of Apple's video editing suite. They all used to be together once upon a time, but now they're separate. And Motion is very, very inexpensive, and it's also easy to use once you get the hang of it and very powerful. In fact, the vast majority of transitions and effects that you will get from these third parties are created in Motion and then just exported so you can pull them in. But today, we we are going to show you how to motion track text in your video utilizing Motion 5. All right, we are going to start by creating a new motion project and we're going to rename our first group to clip except we'll do it with all lower caps there. That's good. And then we will import our footage that we shot earlier, uh, which is a sliding shot of this vinyl toy, which is about 33 seconds long. Our timeline is only 10 seconds because we don't have the blade tool in motion. We're just going to scrub it and find where we want to edit it. Now, sometimes here I like to keep things a little bit longer rather than having a clip that is just ultimately too short. So it gives me a little flexibility in the ends. So we're gonna add a new group and we're going to call that lettering. This is where we're going to add our text. We're gonna click on the text button and I'm gonna put it in this gray area here because if I put it up in the white, I'm not gonna see what I type because it's gonna come out white first. So we're gonna type in Japanese vinyl because that's what this Frankenstein is. We're gonna to go to the inspector and we're going to click on 3D text and then we're going to go to the drop down menu and we're going to click on 3D styles and go with glossy green because that looks really cool for this style. And then we're just going to adjust the size and try not to flip it over. And we're just going to kind of place it wherever that looks good. Maybe make it a little bit bigger. And that should be the perfect spot for it. So we can see that when we run our footage, that the text stays in the exact same place. And that's not what we want. We want the text to follow beside the vinyl toy. So what we're going to do now is we are going to jump over to the library. We're going to go to behaviors and then we're going to select motion tracking and we're going to select match move and we're going to drag that and we're going to place that over top uh, for a good reason because we're going to add some text lettering in here now you can see if we go through here it still hasn't done anything it's it's just sitting where it is so what you're going to do is go to the inspector and you're going to see this little crosshair and then you're going to find a spot with good contrast on the box here. This orange and black will work very well. So we're going to get there and then we're going to go over to the box here. We're just going to fine tune, adjust it just a little bit. Uh, and then we are going to look ahead about six frames uh, and we're going to click analyze. And what it's going to do now is it's going to analyze the motion and it's going to use that point as a reference and it's going to go through the entire clip. So obviously the longer the clip is, the longer this is going to take, depending on your computer, it might take a while, but there you go. It has done it and it should be a decent job. If we uh, check it out here, we'll go to the beginning and we'll click play and you can see nice and smooth. It goes all the way through and you can see the keyframes throughout. So that has done a good job. 
Uh, we're going to adjust. And the nice thing is, is now that it's tracked to that point, even when we make those adjustments, you can see it is still moving in conjunction with our reference point. So after the fact, you can move it around. Uh, unless there is anything really terrible or you pick the bad reference point, you won't have to analyze again. So again, we're going to add some lettering here. And we're going to just add some more lines. We could add multiple texts depending on what we wanted to say about uh, Frankenstein here. But in this case, he is limited edition. So we're going to type in limited edition. We're going to go back again, select our 3D text. We're going to size it up. And because we have it in the same group, the beauty of it is, is we just have to line things up the way we want visually. And then when we click play, what should happen, or when we scrub it here, it will move. So that match move will essentially work for everything below it. Now, if we move it below, you're going to see what happens here. It's just going to do it for that particular writing. So you can have multiple match moves doing match multiple things. But in this case, we want everything to kind of move together. So that's what we're going to do. And then if you want, you can make some adjustments. Uh, you know, this, we don't want the text necessarily to pop right in. We want kind of a fade in and out. And we want, of course, the Japanese vinyl to appear first and then the limited edition. Uh, popping is fine, but if you really want to go, you can go and back to things like the library and we will check out in behaviors. We'll find fade. So we're going to fade in and out and we're going to apply those to both our letters. So we're just going to drag and drop that underneath and it should apply. And we're going to do that to both. And that should have them fade in. There you go. We've got Japanese final verse quickly followed by the limited edition. It looks good. It starts fading out and I can't adjust the end here because it looks like my screen isn't quite lined up uh, on the second monitor, which I'm recording on. So we're just going to adjust that. There we go. We're going to cut those back a bit. So we get a little bit of fade out before the clip ends. And we're going to do that as a whole. We're going to move that. And we'll move the Japanese vinyl. And we should be good. If we play that through, we'll scrub it through. Letters come in, follows nicely with the vinyl. And then as it gets to the end of the clip, they both fade away, so works perfect. So there you go. That's a quick tutorial how to motion track your text in your videos to be exported for Final Cut Pro utilizing Motion 5. Again, Motion 5, once you get to understand the program, is extremely powerful. And if you are utilizing Final Cut Pro to edit your videos, I do highly recommend that you start learning Motion. And if you have any questions, comments, leave them down below. Don't forget to hit that bell button, subscribe to this channel. And until next time, see ya.